He has been the only person in my life who never made me feel really conscious of my disability. He always said, you're not a disabled person, you're somebody who needs a bit of help. But the wonderful thing about him and the thing that I will always love him for is that he's never said my aspirations to do something is ridiculous. He's always said, go for it. He's made me believe in myself in a way that nobody else could. OK. She says I give her a lot, but she equally gives me a lot. I wouldn't want to go back to where I was before. I married her. There were a lot of people that criticised us and said it was all wrong. I think we proved them wrong. We are very deeply in love with one another. The sexual side of our marriage has always been incredibly difficult due to cerebral palsy. And obviously I'd been relatively deprived of sexual contact. And fortunately I'm fairly well endowed on the boob front. It's my best bit of my anatomy because <laughs> nothing else is very good. Um, and fortunately, he's very much um, a breast man. When Lou was born, we went to see a specialist that examined um, premature babies. He just lifted her up and threw her into my arms and he said to me, there you are, mother, there's your baby. She'll never be any good. Take her home and forget her. So that was that. I think all the way from Carl Shelton to Poplar, I cried and she was still crying. And before I got home, I got angry. And I said to her, who do they think they are to tell me my child's no good? We'll show them, won't we, darling, that you're some good. Got no right to say that to you. In November 2003, I filled my old friend Lynn Barrett, <laughs> receiving her MBE for services to the disabled. Although blind and having cerebral palsy, I've seen her achieve remarkable things with the help and devotion of Ralph, her husband of 17 years. The very first time you and I went out together, you took me out for a meal. And I thought, oh, bloody hell, how am I going to manage? Um, I've got to ask him to cut the food up. Uh, what if I spill something? Uh, what if he doesn't understand about eating food by the face of a clock? And I might need going into the loo. But you were just absolutely brilliant. It was like second nature to you. I came home from that meal the very first time, I, and I was sort of pinching myself and thinking, God, you know, what's happening to me? <laughs> <laughs> and you gave me a single long stem rose in a sort of cellophane wrap. And I thought, God, he's a romantic as well. <laughs> you know, I'm sitting there thinking, I think I'm falling in love with this man. I mean, how could I, how could I stop myself, basically? Yep. I first went to them for counselling, having lost my first wife. So I offered to take her out. And uh, one thing led to the other, and we finished up going for an evening drink and then a meal. And then... So we carried on like that until sometime along the line I realised we were getting very close. What was actually really threw me was when she said to me, I can't counsel you anymore. So I said, why? She said, well, we're becoming too close. You know, we can either be friends or we can stop counselling. <laughs> So I elected to go for the friendship, and I haven't regretted it yet. Two years after they met, Lynn became Mrs Boyce. Yeah. Can I have it? I'll take that. Sorry. 
Ralph, at 54, was 17 years her senior. I remember when he said to me, I want to marry Lynn. And uh, I said to him, I don't know, Ralph. I said, are you sure what you're taking on? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he said, I think I am. So I said, well, I'm very happy to think that you see Lynn as a very desirable person. I said, that really makes me happy. I said, but when you say to me, I think I love Lynn, then I, I think you've got to be sure because what you're taking on is a big commitment, 24 hours a day is your priority to Lynn. Those wedding vows were for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, and in sickness and in health. Well, when our minister said that, I was tempted to say pass. Um, I mean, let's face it, Ralph was a pretty unique, marvellous guy to even consider taking me on. He had to be either extremely brave or extremely stupid. But um, with Ralph, it's very much a husband and wife relationship, not a brother and sister relationship. Um, and it was a honeymoon in every sense of the word. <laughs> now, there we were, you see, in a very intimate moment. And we're getting really close. And all of a sudden, my artificial eye falls out and he drops straight on my chest and it sort of staring at us, you see, and I just turned to him and I said, he's looking at your kid, and <laughs> we, just, we just carried on. There's no answer to that, is <laughs> This is the thing that I just love about him, because he tried to give me you know, daft experiences and we got fantastically happy memories, haven't we, really? I mean, who would have imagined taking me to Israel? And we went to Paris and we went on Concord and we went to some lovely weekends away and some lovely hotels. It was just a wonderful time. But we used to go away to these hotels and holidays and we'd come back absolutely knackered and feeling as though we needed another holiday because the accommodation was so inadequate for people with disabilities. So rather sitting in a corner and moaning about it. Huh? We decided to set up a charity to see if we could make a difference and provide people with the right kind of facilities. When we started this trust off with a, with a group of people around the table, we had very little going for us. And there were people out there that said, you know, you'll never make it. This trust to Lynn and myself is the one thing in life we want to prove because we want to prove that there's places out there where disabled people can go and have nice holidays. In 1997, after five years of hard fundraising, Lynn and Ralph invited me to Norfolk for the opening of their very first purpose-built holiday home. I'd like to thank all of you for coming. Um, I think this is one of the happiest days of my life. I knew we'd make it one day. We had a lot of drawbacks on the way through and a lot of hiccups and that sad time. Without your help, we just wouldn't have been able to build it. Thank you very much indeed. This is our baby. The fulfilment that I get, like other people have children, you know. I feel tremendously proud that Ralph and I have set this up and it's my ambition before I die to have properties north, south, east and west. Berwick Cottage was a fantastic achievement, but in their moment of triumph, a shadow was cast over their future. Ralph was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. An incurable degenerative illness, it gradually leads to loss of speech and movement. I feel very angry about getting Parkinson's. It's unfair. Why me? You know. But now we had a big problem because the person that was going to be looking after Lynn was now becoming a person that may in later life need help himself. Are they Lynn's got all her problems, and, and now I've added to her problems with some of mine now. July 2001, four years after Ralph's diagnosis for Parkinson's. He's now got problems with his knees, but is still Lynn's full-time carer. We both get very tired. 
because we'll both get up during the night and that won't necessarily be at the same time. So you get very much two hours sleep and then a break and then two hours sleep. An able-bodied person can get up in the middle of the night, go spend a penny and be back in bed within about three, four minutes. Us, half an hour, 40 minutes. Most times we go through the night with about six, six hours sleep at the most. She's got to ask me for everything she wants. And at times she does ask at the wrong time. Once she woke me up and said, I need to get up, Ralph. And I said, no, and went back to sleep. <laughs> but it didn't last long because she woke me up again by thumping me. <laughs> Missed. <laughs> <laughs> When Ralph was first diagnosed, I was looking into the abyss and, and talking about jumping off beachy head together. Right then, love. If it gets really bad, we'll just go together, you know, push the car over the top. Fortunately, we usually manage to hold each other up. When I'm down, he sort of bucks up because he has a purpose and vice versa. As far as I know, you never took your lunchtime pill. Oh, I'm one down. So the best thing to do now is to take one now with a piece of bread or something, otherwise you'll feel sick. All right, I've got one. And then have one about 9 or 9.30, otherwise you'll be taking all your party pills on top of each other. <laughs> Without her, I don't think I'd be functioning. I've got Parkinson's and if I don't take my pills, I can't help her. But it still becomes a drudge when your life revolves around pills. I think I was up to about 28 a day at one time, and they had to be taken in order. I know without Lynn, I would have forgotten which ones I'd taken and that. And she's got a very good memory, and she's got a very good hearing for what I'm doing. She knows if I'm taking my pills or I'm not taking them. But, uh, no, she says I give her a lot, but she equally gives me a lot. She may not be able to give me things that otherwise could give me, but she gives me a good useful life together we have. He has been an inspiration, the way he's managed to carry on looking after me and keep himself going despite it all. Rather than kind of wallow in his own self-pity, that wouldn't do him any good and it certainly wouldn't do me any good. Oh. <laughs> all right. Oh, they're lovely, aren't they? Right. Look at that. Ralph continues well, to support really. Lynn in oh, her ambition good. to build a chain of holiday homes. Oh, oh. Band is going to play. But her trust me to be the architect. Plans are being finalised for a second <laughs> holiday home. It's to be built in Scotland on land donated by the Duke and Duchess of Hamilton. But I think their top priority the is to, is to get the, the... We could have chucked in the towel and said, right, he's got Parkinson's, we're not going to do anything else. But we've striven together, and I actually think it's been Ralph's salvation. As long as we know that before we go to planning. Sorry. We've got to get it through the council. Then we've got to take it to the Dalton villages. I'd like to be able to do those two things in August. Six weeks later, Lynn and Ralph flew to Scotland to get planning permission. It turned out to be a life-changing journey. The journey up went without a hitch. Everything was fine until the journey home. On their way back, the seat that allowed Lynn to sit without bending her legs was unavailable. When we got on board, Ralph took one look at it and said, uh, my wife won't be able to sit there. And they started to push and they started to shove and I was virtually on the floor, just being held off the floor by Ralph. The passengers were then coming up, um, putting their hands up my skirt and trying to drag me out from underneath the seat. And the air crew people were dragging me across the floor to pick me up. Lynn was promised a suitable seat on the next flight, due in four hours. When we got on the plane, the captain said, we can't let you sit in the seat you want to sit in. You've got to sit in the second row. I said, I will not be able to get myself and a pair of tripods in that gap. Oh, yes, you will. And again, they started to pull and shove and push. And at one time, they've got me by the shoulders and they're trying to pull me over the top of the seat in front of me. 
I go down between these two rows of seats like a sack of potatoes. Lynn was taken off the plane yet again. Another four hours later, a plane with a suitable seat finally arrived. My knees have swollen like footballs, and I was thinking, my God, I feel like I've been run over by a steamroller, but how I've got to get out of this wheelchair and I've got to get in that aeroplane because I've got to get home. It doesn't matter about the pain. Their 80-minute flight had turned into a 14-hour nightmare. They didn't get home until 1.20 the following morning. That Monday morning, I went for physio because I'd been having treatment on my shoulder. OK, I think I'm going to have to come down the back here. Yeah. OK. That's when I'm stuck right down that right left here. side of my back. OK. The guy took one look at me and he said, oh, bloody hell, what have they done to you? He said, your spine is so twisted, I don't know where to start. Okay. Yeah. OK, let's relax a bit there. Yeah, but it's lower down on that shoulder yeah, joint. Okay, it's rock solid just behind it. Okay, fine. The day up. after, the particular airline in question sent the most massive bouquet of flowers you've ever seen in your life. And I rang them up and I thanked them for the flowers. And I said, but you will be hearing from my lawyers this morning. And they said, yes, we thought we would. Liability wasn't an issue, and the airline offered Lynn £85,000 in compensation. An offer her lawyer advised her to refuse. She lives a very active life, and that's something that I would like to think that she can continue to do because she is a very uh, important member of society. Um, it would be unfortunate if the, the deterioration in her condition means that she's unable to do anything. She no longer feels that she's in control of her life or her body. I can't move. Then you're having a very bad patch with regard to the pain levels. And she's virtually never out of pain now. And I don't think any of us can realise where that pain must drain on her. And I don't think that will get better. And the prospects are that it will get less. She'll be able to walk less, she'll be able to do less. That will put a terrific physical strain on me. And it depends if I can hold up long enough to keep her going. She's going to need more care, and I'm getting to the stage now where I want to have a little bit of rest of my own. December 2003. Ralph is now 70. The past two years have been tough on him. He's had both knee joints replaced and his Parkinson's is worse. With the Parkinson's, my legs kick out quite a lot at night and Lynn finds out she can't go to sleep. So what I tend to do is to come in here and when I wake up during the night, I creep back into bed again. And hopefully I don't wake Lynn up. But uh, at the moment, I'm sleeping on a bed in this room. It's not a good position, but we're both getting better sleep, but it's not helping the relationship, obviously. You always imagine that your carer is going to be strong for you. When you realise that they're fallible human beings, it's a bit of a shock. You need somebody you can rely on, because without them, you ain't going to survive. When you are dependent upon someone who's got equally as big a problem as yourself, um, that is really scary. I was convinced I had dreams and everything that was Over the last two years, Lynn's constant pain and decreased mobility have taken their toll on Ralph. James and George. Carers from social services now have to come in daily to fit Lynn's elasticated stockings, and a cleaner helps Ralph with his housework. Despite her problems, Lynn still runs a successful Braille translation business. But because she works, she's only entitled to the basic disability allowance of £58 a week to help pay for care. Everything that I earned last year has just gone in care cost. I have friends that have loaned me £10,000 to pay for care at this point. 
And I do know that there are a nucleus of people out there who genuinely care about me and have helped me through this really difficult and horrendous two years. The biggest drain on Lynn's income has been the need for a 24-hour carer to come in every few weeks to give Ralph some respite. What are you going to have to drink, Ralph? Edinburgh, please. Yeah, you, Lynn? When Liz came to our lives, we were just rock bottom. Ralph was so exhausted and unmotivated that it created terrible tension and pressure between us. If it hadn't have been for Liz arriving on our doorstep, we might not have been together now. Uh, and she just gave us lots of love and TLC and brought us back from the brink and, you know, we've gradually sort of got our life together again. When I first came, Ralph said, if I tell you the truth, I don't like having a carer in the house. So at first I felt quite offended. But I realised what he's saying. He said, I just want it to be the two of us because that's how I always wanted it. That's why I married Lynn, because I love her and I wanted to look after her. And that's been taken away from me. So I feel like my life has been halved. But he said, if I must have somebody, oh, I'd prefer it to be you. Ralph has just started an experimental drug regime in the hope of improving his condition so that he can continue to look after Lynn on his own. The next three months are a little bit downhill for them while they sort out Ralph's drugs. It could be very positive. Mm. He could get well sorted out and it, they could raise their living level in, you know, enjoyment. Whoops, there you go. Thank you, thank you. That's quite all right. If you think that because Lynn is disabled, and I'm disabled as well, really, and we live in one another's pocket 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and don't take this wrongly, I need to get away from Lynn sometimes. And she's a chief of me. And uh, it's nice sometimes when I... Lynn goes out with her carer. Held my hand we said, oh, this is lovely, isn't it? <laughs> Today, Liz and Lynn are off to a performance of Handel's Messiah at the Albert Hall. Well, here we go, here we go. Yes, again. Putting <laughs> Bruce a sigh of relief when I go out. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> A few more, Sleep tight. God bless. And you. No night. Thank you for your help today. Oh. I love you, Mrs. <laughs> yeah. Call me if you need me. Ralph? Ralph? Mm. Sorry, I didn't mean to make you jump. Mm. Lynn's in bed, all right? Oh, no, all right, darling. Sleep well. Nine days later, and it's the end of Liz's stay. Um, usually Ralph gets Lynn up in the mornings because they like to spend time together. And when there's a carer in the house, that's probably the only time they get to really have some private time and chat. 
So, um, but sometimes when Ralph's um, Parkinson's sort of gets the better of him, well then I get a little nap. But I think he's finding it increasingly difficult to get up and look after her first thing in the morning, but he won't admit it. He won't give in, which is admirable. I think the only things I've got to do before I leave, I feel like going back to bed. Okay. I ought to be getting on with leaving. But it's like a journey being here, and at the end of it, I feel absolutely exhausted, not just physically, but mentally as well. I can't, uh, as they say, get my act together and pack and go. It's just like a supreme effort when I finally get sorted. I can't imagine how Ralph is with a closer relationship and he can't leave. Must be very difficult. I've got 500 pound here. Okay. Well, I need another 16. Well, wait a minute, let me count it because I mean, if it's 20 pound more, you might as well have it back. <laughs> you we never know. We've kept an arrangement. <laughs> so you and I are £10 each. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. This is actually not as well paid as all the other jobs I do. And she doesn't find it very easy to pay me because she, equ she equates me as a friend and not, you know, not as a, an employee or somebody who comes on a contract to do a, a job. And she's had a lot of money worries. There's so much stress caused by her injuries in the airline, worrying about whether she's going to be able to cope monetarily, whether she's going to be able to afford carers, etc. And I always worry when I'm leaving them because they're not in position to have carers all the time. And I feel concerned that they're going to come a trifle unstuck while I'm away because of their difficulties. They're two very vulnerable people and he's finding it harder literally by the day. Because of the high cost of care, Liz's health has to be rationed. Ralph will have to manage on his own for the next four weeks. With finances stretched, Lynn calls her lawyer to check progress on her claim for damages against the airline. The thing is, Mark, if they keep pussyfooting around like this, the thing is, I'm very shortly going to be in complete financial stook. I have had a bigger tax bill than was, you know, uh, uh, I originally anticipated. Well, I've got, uh, I've got... The airline's insurers have already made some small interim payments. Right. Last time, they took 11 weeks to pay £5,000. I have not got 11 weeks... The time I pay this tax bill, I have not got 11 weeks of money left. OK, thank you very much. Oh, God. oh, I feel I'm going nuts this morning. I really do. Then it's changed. And I don't know whether it's the pending court action, my Parkinson's or whatever it is, but I think we've both changed. But I think Lynn's changed for the worst in as much that she expects everything to be done immediately. She must realise that a lot of these things take time. What is the point of keep fighting? All the time, I just feel like sitting in a corner and saying, sod it, let them... You, you know, they're reducing me to it. What's happened? Well, a wheelchair that won't push because it's twisted. Bloody house looks like bombs in it. Rub falling asleep all over the place. Every five minutes I'm having to wake him up. Probably because he's bored and depressed. And when he's bored and depressed, he shuts down. We call this living. You've got to be joking. I'll end up as a feeding and shitting machine because that's what they're reducing me to. It all boils down to toilet breaks and not much else. And I'm just totally fed up. Totally fed up. I don't want to see it going on like this. 
Yeah, I can't wave a magic wand and stop it. I think the world of her. And she ought to know that if she does. I think she does deep down. I know she does. I love him to pieces for who he is. But the age difference is really telling now, due to the parky. And when I look at him, I feel his vulnerability. But I also feel my own. Lynn's lawyer has arranged for her to be examined by an expert in cerebral palsy to establish the extent of the damage she suffered so on the plane. The prognosis was pretty bleak for the future. When someone tells you your life could be consumed by pain, I think it was, it was almost a bigger shot than going blind, to be honest with you. It just, it just hit me like a sack of potatoes, yet I had to pick myself up and keep going. And what I actually felt like doing was just ending it there and then. She said that my disability was at a level as though I was 68, and here I am, 53. The prospects of Lynn for finally finishing up being in a wheelchair all the time, being hoisted into bed, hoisted onto the toilet, yeah. meaning that we want two carers, because I can't do it on my own, and one carer won't do it. Yeah. No, she's being hoisted. And so you're, again, you're talking money. Lynn was also examined by a medical expert appointed by the airline's insurers. Her lawyer has been sent his report. We've just had the two medical reports um, particularly the defendant's report and the difference in the uh, assessment of the advancement is very significant. Ours is 15, theirs is three, which is a huge gap. So uh, I'm going to see Lynn to discuss this with her and the implications in the next stage. Three years is completely and utterly insulting for what they've done to me. I'm certainly not going to accept that. There isn't one part of me that doesn't hurt. I just don't know how long you can go you can go on like that. I just feel I've been beaten into the ground by this airline who have got more money. The outcome of claims isn't dependent on who's got the most money. Uh, it's dependent on the quality of the medical evidence because that determines the value of the claim. We have... It's a delicate time for Lynn. Are the doctors going to agree? Is she going to be happy on what they agree? Uh, if they can't agree, how quickly can we get the matter to trial? If we can't get it to trial for a long time, how is she going to pay for the care between now and the date of trial? It's a problem for Lynn, but she's really got to hang in there. To make ends meet, Lynn decides to yeah. cash in some of her savings. Let him go. Who never knows? I might have lost the chance of getting a million quid now. They assume that because of my situation, they can break me. Well, not without a bloody good fight, they can't. Not without a good fight. It's not the only fight they have on their hands. Yeah. Until it's gone, they've got to cope yes. on their own. Right. What are we doing about lunch? You could pop down and get some ham or whatever. No, I'm not or... popping down. All right, no. OK, so you're not popping down. I'm just giving options. You're not. I'm just saying, you could either get some ham or something, yeah. or we could go out for Look, a minute. We haven't got time to go. Lynn is becoming now, I want, much more than she ever used to be. She gets very agitated, and I want, and that wears a bit thin at times. Come on, friend. I probably do come across sometimes as an unfeeling, uncompassionate person. But if I was to let him see just how frightened I was for him as well as for me, and I went all mushy on him, he just wouldn't function. 
With Ralph's illness making it more difficult for him to cook, he's still able to drive short distances for the odd takeaway. As he gets worse, he'll have to stop driving and they'll be housebound. Ralph, wake up before you fall on the floor, dear. Two weeks later, Lynn has had a fall getting out of bed. I think I've had about an hour and a half sleep. I'm feeling extremely weary. <laughs> and now I've got to get up because the carers are coming and there's a trust meeting and I just feel like saying, oh, go away to the lot, you know. Yeah, all it is is a broken toe. I mean, it's ridiculous. The toe is not the problem. I mean, painful and throbbing, but if, if that was, you know, if that was the only thing, that would be fine, but it's the, the knock-on of the way everything aches. And, oh, you know, it just drives you mad, disability. Who'd want it? <laughs> I certainly wouldn't. I'm just about reaching the end of my rope, I think. You just feel so trapped, you know, because you, you want to move and you can't. Morning. Hi, honey. Oh. Crisis brings the best out in him, it really does. How's your foot today? Sore. I think he enjoys being needed. He doesn't enjoy the pressure, if you know what I mean, but... Three. No. <coughs> Two. I feel much more of a burden than usual oh, and yet God. it does bring out the stuff that you're made of and uh, make you think well yeah there is something special about this relationship despite it all you're not a boy scout for nothing are you? you? Hold that, yeah. hang on I don't think my water's going to get in right. there do you? No. they said we've got to keep it dry can't do anything else these last two weeks have been very tiring for both of us because Lynn can't move around. Actually, she broke a bone in her foot. It was about five o'clock in the morning. We finished up getting neighbours out of bed on Sunday morning to help me. We're getting to a point now when I can't pick Lynn up on my own. I've got to have help. And if she finishes up on the floor, she doesn't do it very often, but obviously she's likely to do it any time. I don't know what we're going to do the next time she goes on the floor. Because of Lynn's injury, Liz had to return earlier than planned. All right. yeah. <laughs> you know who your friends are, don't you? Yeah. With Ralph growing weaker, they have to start looking for equipment to lift Lynn should she fall again. That's going to slightly lift you up. Off the chair. Don't like it. Ready. Please. Oh, shut up. Unless Lynn agrees to have her voice, I don't know what we're going to do the next time she goes on the floor. What oh, I'll do. Bloody hell. What I'll do. Tell listen. me something. What's that? Bloody back. Bring the chair closer to Lynn, if you would, please. Right under. That's it. That's it. As soon as we come down a little bit. She's got to agree to it at some stage, but she's rebelling against it at the moment and she's saying it's the end of the world if, if it happens. But the alternative is I can't pick her up. She's got to agree to have something to help me pick her up. When I was slung up in that hammock, I was so choked up inside and everybody was deciding what they could do with me. I felt like a parcel instead of a human being. And for me, it just felt like the final nails in the coffin, really, that this is what my end is going to be like. And um, I just couldn't cope with it. All right, come on. Let's get you out of here. Let's get you out of here. I know what the knock-on effect is. Because I'm not mobile, the problems of deterioration and uh, I'm having to do these things when I don't want to do them. That's it. <laughs> if she goes downhill fast, 
And we're talking about when she wakes up now and says, it's not worth it. And she speaks to the Lord, her Lord and says, yeah, what, what are you doing this to me for? I can't go on like this. And uh, she's giving up. I've never known them do it. And I think the pain has just got to her now that you know, she's giving up. And we've got to very quickly get rid of this pain or else get her on her feet again. That's one way of doing it. Lynn is looking Not for a new wheelchair pain. to help oh, ease the constant that. pain she is suffering. Yeah, I don't like What don't you like? No. <laughs> what don't you like? I just don't like the angle of the thing. Of, well, of what? Yeah, it it Maybe it's because it's not set up exactly. properly well, for me. I think that's your problem at the moment. You sound depressed about it. Um, There's no easy solution, Lynn, I'm afraid. There's no, no just sitting in no. it, it fits straight away, my love. <laughs> Positive thoughts, Lynn. Do you want to adjust this one? Yeah. Ralph? I'm sorry. My apologies. Okay. If we can just lift Lynn's leg again. Because I think once we get a lot of this pressure off the leg, she's going to feel a lot more comfortable, hopefully. Where's the pressure now, love? Well, it's better once I've got two legs. That's it. Does that feel better? That's better. Uh-huh. Yeah, you got that now. Two betters. Cool. Two betters there. Two betters. We're giving wood. We haven't had a negative yet. Yeah. Cool. Have another drink. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's the bubble uh, thing water. No, it's just the lumbar pain. Yeah, but, yeah. The lumbar pain. Can I say something here, Lynn, without being disrespectful to you and hurting your feelings at all? I personally don't feel we're ever going to solve every single problem. No, I know. I really am sorry to say that, but I don't think there's anything on the market that's going to make it 100%. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. If Lynn doesn't exercise and keep her legs moving, she soon won't be able to walk at all. I, I have felt very cheerful this time because I can see how much they've got going for them as a couple and and they're lost in this mire of money and pills and that kind of thing and I think you're missing you, you know you're very lucky a lot of people would give their eye teeth to have that kind of relationship, forget, you know, cerebral palsy and the Parkinson's and all the rest of it. On occasions in my life, I would have given my eye teeth to have um, the sort of love and affection that those two have for each other underneath all this. More than one occasion, I've walked away and sat down in here when they've been, let's say, in the loo or Lynn's been in the bath, and I haven't been able to stop the tears. It's not been good. Not on this trip anyway, but I should be back. <laughs> to try and cheer Lynn up, Ralph decided to get a puppy. Come on, that's a good boy. Come on. Come in. Harvey. Hello. Hello. Oh, you good boy. Oh. They give far more to us than we give to them. Yeah. And I think it'll be good for both of us. And, uh, you know, if, if things are a little bit, uh, so what should we say, strained, he's one let out that we can both go to and stroke and make a fuss of, knowing that you'll get a response from him straight away. They don't want him to go to court. Bad news from Lynn's lawyer. There are yet more delays as the medical experts negotiate. I think it's appalling, absolutely appalling. I thought we were getting to the end, but nearly three years, and really we're not much further forward. What they're trying to do is to cripple us financially. They can then offer her less, and she'll take it. But unfortunately, they don't know Lynn, and maybe we'll fight them all the way on that one. It's now three months since Ralph started his new course of tablets. Last week was um, absolutely terrible. Ralph was very depressed and irritable, and I just felt absolutely isolated and 
devastated, really, because I just felt I was losing my husband in a fog. This week, he's bright, he's laughing. It was just wonderful to hear him. He hasn't laughed like that since I don't know when. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting ready for punishing. The new pills he's giving me as an experiment seems to be helping. They're giving me more energy. Ralph's renewed energy couldn't have come at a better time. Their charity has just received £210,000 from the Scottish Lottery Fund. Building of their second holiday home can now begin. Ralph and Lynn are determined to attend the inauguration in Scotland. With flying no longer an option, it takes them two days. Yeah. Lynn has been asked to turn yeah. the first piece of soil yeah. on the land donated by the Duke and Duchess of Hamilton. It really is quite remarkable to be here. I would not have been able to manage without my husband Ralph and Liz, who've given me absolutely amazing support on the road. My deepest thanks go to their graces, the Duke and Duchess of Hamilton, because it made a vision, a definite reality. Thank you very much. You forget that Lynn is disabled, yeah. let alone blind. To go on and achieve what she has achieved, I think per perhaps, I don't know, but I would imagine, because of meeting with Rolf, her husband, I think that really must have made it. And I've always felt that two people who really care about each other can move mountains mm. together far better than one person on their own. Mm. And I think together they've achieved it. <laughs> you wally! <laughs> I'm older than Lynn, and it's on the cars that I would go before her. And if I go, I don't know where she's going to get the support. Because if anything happened to me now, she would be probably in a home by two or three weeks down the road if she wasn't very careful. So what we tend to do is to do anything we want to do, we do now, because tomorrow might be too late. I don't know what my life would be like without him. Deep down, despite all the struggles, I still adore him. And if I'm not here because my disability has got the better of me, I hope that he will remember that I loved him in a way that I've never loved anything or anybody else. All right, mate? Yeah. <sighs> That's oh. matter, I can give you a kiss, can't I? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you'd done every foot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's that? What's that? <laughs>